In this video, we'll be carrying on continuing building out the architecture for this application. And right now we're kind of just working on how we're going to model the data. In the previous video, uh, by the way, I'll put a link up here to the previous video. In the previous video, we built out the domain model. So kind of like the, the core business model for the project. Now we're going to work on the retrofit stuff, the network stuff. This is going to be accessing a real API. If you didn't know, I know I've said it several times already throughout the course, but if you didn't know, yes, we are going to be using real data because if you know me, I only like to build, you know, realistic projects or as realistic as possible. So we need retrofit to do these network operations. So we're going to be getting the network or the uh, dependency for a retrofit in this one and then building the model that's going to model the data that we're going to get using retrofit. So let's get that retrofit dependency and let's get started. So to get the retrofit dependency, you can go to Google and just, you know, search for, you know, retrofit uh, Android probably is a good one to search for. And it's probably going to be one of the first links that comes up here. You're looking for square.github.io slash retrofit. And you want to go down to the download section over here on the right. So if you don't know what retrofit is, which I'm sure like 95% of you probably do, uh, it's a it's an open source library for doing network operations on Android. It makes getting stuff from the internet easy to do, basically. Other options are Volley. Um, I think there's more, but the other popular one is Volley. But I personally like Retrofit because you can model the data more closely. So you just need this uh, import right here, this one. So you could copy this, go over to Android Studio, go into the build.gradle app file, and I'll close this to give you guys a better view. Scroll down to the very bottom and we can paste in this dependency. I'll do uh, define uh, retrofit retrofit uh, version and I think it was 2.9.0 is the newest one currently right now. And then just paste in implementation. Make sure to change this to double quotation marks because if you don't, you won't be able to pass the variable as the version. So I'll do retrofit version as a variable and we're not quite done we do need one more dependency we need the json parser for retrofit so this is what's going to help us get and uh, put the data into a format that we can use so if you scroll up here you can see that there's a bunch of converters on retrofit there's a json jackson moshi protobuf wire symbol xml jaxby i don't use any of these i think i've used moshi maybe once i think moshi is technically the most um, optimal I, or the best performant uh, serializer, but I'm not 100% sure about that. I always use J, uh, JSON. That's just the, my go-to one that I always use. So that's the one that I'm going to use in this project. So just copy this, com square retrofit to converter JSON, go back to Android Studio, write implementation, and just do uh, that dependency that I just copied the JSON converter, and then do the same retrofit version. So retrofit version. So those are the two dependencies. Now let's press sync and we're ready to build our, our model for the data that we're getting from the network. So while this is syncing, let's actually just, rem I'll just remind you of what this data is going to look like. So again, we're getting data from foodtofork.ca. There's about 3000 recipes on here and you can get them through the REST API. In the previous video, I showed you kind of uh, what this data structure is going to look like. And I'll put a link up here just to remind you. And um, yeah, we need to model this data. So if you go down here, uh, here is the data. Here's an example of the data when you do a search. So this is essentially a recipe right here. If you scroll down, you know, this is a recipe right here. So this is a list of recipes from the API. And again, go check out the previous video if you want more information about how to use this API. So um, we want to model this data for retrofit to parse it. So we essentially need to make fields in Android. We need to build an Android model that is exactly the same as what this is. And if it's not exactly the same, then we need to build some kind of a converter for data structures that are kind of unique. Lucky enough for us though, this is pretty simple. Um, this is a pretty simple model to, uh, a pretty simple structure to model. So we should have no problems. So go into the main package directory, go to new package and just call this the network package. And inside of network, let's create another new package and call this model. So we're kind of copying a little bit like what we did in domain here. We have domain model and then that core business model. Now I have network model and now this is going to be the, the network model for modeling the data from the network. So what I'm going to call this is I'm going to call this uh, recipe, recipe network 
entity. So generally, whenever I am naming some kind of a model that's from another layer other than the domain layer, I always use the word entity. So it's a recipe, uh, it's a recipe object. What layer is it from? Well, it's from the network, and it's an entity. Entities are just like a keyword that I use for, this is a model for some other layer. Okay, so create this new file, and I'm gonna close this to give you lots of room here. So we need to do a class recipe network entity, and we can open this up and do at serialized name is an annotation from the uh, library from one of those retrofit dependencies, the JSON library. So you can see I'm getting that import serialized name. And now we want to copy the exact same names as you see in the data structure from the server. Let me just write this out and then I'll uh, show you what I mean. So variable integer equals null, just to say that this is a nullable property. So that's our first property. Now let me just remind you of what the API looks like. So here the, the key in this JSON object is pk and then it's an integer so that's what i've defined here i'm saying the key is pk i could have named this something else i could name this you know primary key that doesn't matter what matters is what i put up here in the serialized name so this has to match what the api key is which is pk right here so just so you know that um, technically uh, i don't have to have that if this name matches what that says in the api technically this is not needed but i generally just leave them there i don't know just kind of a habit of mine so now the next one is going to be uh, the title so let me copy that serialized name this will be the title and i'll write variable title this will be a nullable string so nullable string equals null and that's our next field. So now what's the next one? Now we have publisher, featured image. Um, I'm just gonna write them all out and not bounce back and forth to the API. If you are curious, you know, it's pretty simple. They're almost all strings. This is a string, string, integer, string, string. That's a string. This one is gonna be the tricky one. Uh, and then string and string. So they're almost all strings. So let me just uh, write these out. So I'm gonna copy this one, paste it down below for the next one. This will be the publisher. So now I just need to change this to publisher. That's also a string. Next one is gonna be a primary key. So this one, or a, a rating. So this one will be a little different. So rating and rating. And this one is an integer, integer and paste that down below again. Next one's going to be the source URL. So this will be like the link to um, to the object or to uh, where the recipe originally existed, kind of like like the source. Like if you were writing an article, you would source all of your kind of where you got all your information from. That's what the source URL essentially is. Now we have description, which is just a description of the recipe. Copy that one more time, paste it down below. This one's gonna be cooking instructions. So cooking underscore instructions and do cooking instructions and paste it down below we got uh we got two more to go here date underscore added so date added and the last one is going to be another date and this is date updated so date underscore updated and then date updated whoops updated oh i actually did forget one i forgot the ingredients so the ingredients is going to be the trickiest one this one will be ingredients that's the keyword ingredients and this will be a list of strings so i'm going to write list and string and this will be a uh, you can make it a nullable list because technically there could be no ingredients and uh yeah so that'll be that'll be the uh the data structure so again most of these are strings the only one that's kind of a little different is this ingredients list but i think it's pretty obvious actually when you look at it hey look it's a list what is it a list of? It's a list of strings. So I think you probably uh, probably picked up on that. And that's it. That is our entity for modeling the data that's gonna come from the network. Now we're ready to move on to the next part, which is kind of the more of the retrofit kind of setup stuff. So first we need to build a mapper class that's gonna be able to map our network entity to our domain model and back because they're two different models. So if we get data from the network, we need to be able to map it to our domain model. If we have a domain model, we need to be able to map it to a network model uh, and then uh, after that, we'll work on the actual retrofit interface for getting the data from the network. So I will see you in that next video. And don't forget your engagement. Go down there, leave some engagement, say hey, say hello, leave a like. Engagement, engagement, engagement. I'll see you in the next video.